Revolutionary War Spies, Triumph and Tragedy Within the Cobra Spy Ring. By finding proof for Benedict Arnold's treason, aiding the Continental Army in the Battle of Fort St. George, and paving a path for the future spycraft of America, the members of the Cobra Spy Ring led to the Americans' triumphantly winning the Revolutionary War though members of this private organization tragically gave their lives for the cause of liberty and freedom as they were hanged for building a new nation. September 27, 1776. The Revolutionary War has just begun and a man is standing with a rope around his neck, saying his last words, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. He is hanged for treason against the British, not knowing the impact he will have on the future of America. Skip forward a few months. Nathan Hale is dead, and George Washington knows that unless he had an organized way of communication, anyone else could needlessly die. George Washington realizes how important military intelligence is and how it could help his country. It's the summer of 1778, and George Washington has begun to gather some valuable men, including Benjamin Talmadge and Abraham Woodhull. Talmadge takes over, and the men begin to place together a small network of people including Hercules Mulligan, Philip Brewster, and Robert Townsend. They develop new technology, including the Culper Codebook, a series of numbers used to send coded messages during the war. They had over 700 numbers, each corresponding with a person, place, or thing. Their methods were so good, historians still don't know all the people that might have been involved with this organization. Now going to July 15, 1780. A man named John Andre, a British Army officer, is reading a coded letter from an American named Benedict Arnold. Arnold had been an American hero during the beginning of the war, but ended up as the most infamous traitor in the colonial history. Soon, Arnold was going to be given leadership over the Fort West Point, but feeling as if he was not recognized for his efforts in the war, he intended to surrender the fort to Britain for money. As Andre read the letter, he began to come up with a plan to successfully retrieve the fort. It's September 21st, 1780, and a man is walking down a road in civilian clothes. It is none other than John Andre. The cult of Spiring has been on his trail for days, knowing there was a thought of treason associated with him. They are victorious. After questioning and searching, the group discovers papers directly stating Arnold's treason. Andre captured their plan as foil. October 2nd, Andre is killed. Almost two months later, there is a fort occupied by the British named Fort St. George. The ring intends to take it back. General Benjamin Talmadge stands in front of 80 men, many of them members of the 2nd Continental Light Dragoon, and they march toward battle. The siege was quick. They surrounded the stockade, then charged, assisted with the element of surprise. The attack was done in 10 minutes, and just like that, the ring had received another victory. Morton Pennypacker was a Long Island collector from the early 1900s. He was the one who first discovered one of the main spies in the ring, Robert Townsend, or by its code name, Samuel Culper Jr. Pennypacker was a writer by trade, but his little hobby of collecting historical artifacts led to one of the biggest historical collections of colonial America. It's called the Morton Pennypacker Long Island Collection. He discovered Robert Townsend by comparing two letters by Townsend and Samuel. This relationship was hidden for a long time, but thanks to Pennypacker, historians have been able to study this organization for years. There were other spies before the Culper Spy Ring. Earlier, a man was mentioned named Nathan Hale. In July 1759, a little boy was playing in front of his Connecticut home with his brother. It was Nathan Hale at the age of two. The strongly Puritan family valued hard work and education. Little Nathan was no different. In 1769, 14-year-old Nathan was doing well. He was accepted at Yale and had a very bright future ahead of him. He graduated when he was 18 and began to teach. But everything changed in 1775. The Revolutionary War had begun and his family, his country, was in danger. Hale joined the militia in Connecticut. Only 20 years old, Nathan Hale believed he was prepared to fight for his country. As Nathan Hale trekked along with his companion, he fought in the Battle of Brooklyn, another defeat for the Americans. While Hale was there, he saw men murdered, left and right, almost 1,000 casualties. 
At this point, General George Washington desperately needed information from the enemy line. This was before the culprit firing was established. At the time, it wasn't very honorable to serve your country as a spy. But Nathan Hale, young, inexperienced Nathan Hale, decided to volunteer for the challenge. September 12, 1776. A man was walking down the road, appearing to be a regular school teacher. He decided to use his pass as an alibi. Nathan continued to spy on the British until, if possible, someone gave away his identity. On September 21, 1776, Nathan Hill was captured and accused of signing papers basically declaring his act as a spy against the British. September 27, 1776, Hale finds a small ladder of the rope of around his neck. He yells out, quote unquote, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country, unquote. The ladder is swept from the feet. The culprit's firing isn't very commonly known. Its secret was kept hidden for about 200 years. Even without many people knowing of it, it has influenced all of America. The ring was formed because George Washington realized the need for this military intelligence. Quote unquote, the necessity of procuring good intelligence is apparent and need not be further urged. All that remains for me to add is, we keep the whole matter as secret as possible. For upon secrecy, success depends on most enterprises at the time, and for want of it, they are generally defeated, however well planned. End quote. Letter to Colonel Elias Dayton, July 26, 1777, sent by George Washington. This humble beginning of spycraft slowly led to the Committee of Secret Correspondence, which led to the saving of the capital during the War of 1812 which led to the intelligence services planted in the Navy and other organizations during the Civil War, which led to the establishment of the Bureau of Military Intelligence used during the Civil War, which led to the creation of the Office of Naval Intelligence in 1882, which led to the Zimmerman Telegram created during World War I, which led to, in June 1942, the forming of the Office of Strategic Services used specifically in World War II, which led to the Military Intelligence Service formed later that year, which eventually made its way to what almost all Americans know today, the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, all from a code book and a code breaker. Before this military intelligence, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people died. They didn't have a person to warn them of future attack, attack, or safely protect them. Until the cult was firing, traitors were running loose. But because of a few men, some sacrificing their lives for their country, so many people, then and in later years, were saved. The Culver's Island has changed the United States of America by finding proof for Benedict Arnold's treason, aiding the Continental Army in the Battle of Fort St. George, and putting a path for the future spy path of America. The members of the Culver's Island led to the Americans triumphantly winning the Revolutionary War. Though members of this private organization tragically gave their lives for the cause of liberty and freedom, because they were hands for building a new nation, and other citizens died for their country for the blessings of liberty, so our country can stand strong for years to come.